All right, uh, this project has really been through it. Let me just say that. I had so many that I have showed how to ruin, you know, with too much water. I've had some that I, you know, was kind of showing if they're too dry. So this is like my only one out of all of them that made it. And I was like, you know what, I'm going with it. So one thing people might be struggling with is getting some cracking in certain spots like this. Also having some bumps like this in the clay. Now, if you just have some bumps like that are slightly raised, it's going to be all right because tomorrow when we go in with the burnishing technique, we could kind of really fill those in. However, I was looking at some people's work and you had in between your coils a lot of space and it was causing it to kind of look rather bumpy. Um, that we're not going to be able to fix so much with the smoothing method. So I was going through some of the answers and they're all pretty accurate. Um, a lot of you said to use a rib tool. That is a really great way to smooth the clay. You can use your wooden rib tool, you can use your metal rib tool, whatever is going to help you the best. And I know I had a rib tool over here. Where did it go? Miss Clayton's going crazy. There we go. So you can really use your rib tool to smooth everything together. Um, you're gonna wanna go in like a one direction motion. I like to really start from the bottom and then kind of work my way up and then kind of smooth it to the side. And it's also taking off some extra clay. So if you have any large pieces that are kind of like bumping out on you, this is gonna help take off any of that. So you wanna make sure that you go in and you smooth it as smooth as you could possibly get it. Now, usually, and this is what a lot of people said too, um, your hand is one of the best things to use to smooth clay. Um, this is a little bit different of a consistency, so I find that sometimes tools are a little bit more helpful when working with the porcelain because it allows you to like scrape off some of the sections a little bit easier. Now, down here, I have quite a bit of an indent. So another thing you can do is you can add a little bit of extra clay on. Now, if your pot is super, super, super dry on the bottom, you're gonna have to revive it a little bit before you add any clay to it, because it's not gonna hold it. And when working with porcelain, you're going to want to just use little itty bitty pieces at a time. Kind of patch them in just like that. Make sure you're really compressing it and then just smooth it over. I know we did this with our other projects. However, you don't want to work with pieces of clay too big. Just smaller ones to kind of fill that in. And then you could go over it with your rib tool and flatten it out a little bit more as you need to. If you notice that you're getting cracks along um, the top, that's probably the most common area to get a crack. Um, you're gonna wanna make sure to go in with a paintbrush and some slip. But before that, I wanna show you, if you are building your little vase up pretty tall, you're gonna run into that odd little coil on the inside. And it's gonna be kinda of hard to smooth. So I like to go in and use a paintbrush to do that. And I find that it also then helps with the, um, the cracks on the top. So I'll put a little bit of like thicker slip on my paintbrush paint that on and then holding like the neck just kind of really really applying a bit of pressure to smooth it so it's not only smoothing the coils into each other it's also sealing it with a little bit of slip and you could even go in with a little bit more and just really kind of like work it in there
until you got it nice and smooth. And then I'll usually go around the edge and kind of like touch it up, paint it with some slip a little bit. Now, some of you guys said a, a damp sponge, which is good, um, slightly damp. What would happen if you added like a whole bunch of water to this? It would. It would get really slimy and you wouldn't be able to really work with it so much. So you want to make sure that you're using more just like a thicker slip rather than just straight up water. So if you're going to use a sponge, very like squeeze almost all the water out of it and then you could smooth it that way. I'm going to adjust this a little bit later on, but that's just a good way to go ahead and start to smooth that coil in a little bit better and easier. And this is gonna be my top coil. I went ahead in and I did add a little foot. I just did a one coil foot. Um, I was kinda, like I said, this pot I've been using for like so many different demos. So I did put just one coil around the edge and I smoothed it in both directions and I have this little foot now. So that's something else you could do. When you guys are all finished, making sure that you have smoothed out as much as you can, um, looking and making sure that there's no like super big indents on there, um, no really large bumps. It's natural to have like a few here and there um, but you don't want it to be like really ripply or anything like that. You can go ahead and you can let it start to dry out slowly. I would just take your bag and this is what I have here. I should bring in a shopping bag. But just kind of like loosely rest your bag over the top like that. What you could do if you have like a, you know, ShopRite type bag at home is just kind of like let it float over the top and let air start flowing in. You're going to need your pot if you're finished constructing. For tomorrow, when we burnish, it needs to be somewhere in between bone dry, which is when it's pretty much all the way dry, as much moisture came out of it as it can during just air drying and that leather hard state where you kind of still move the clay around a little bit, you want it right in between there. So you don't want to be able to move the clay because that's going to kind of ruin the technique, but you also don't want it to be so dry that it's like chalky. If that kind of makes sense. So I would maybe even like, if you're finished, Cover it loosely with plastic and then like check on it later tonight, see what kind of consistency it's in. If you could move the clay around like really easily still, um, let it still air dry. If you find that it's dry enough and that you um, are not able to move the clay around, cover it up completely and store it that way because it's probably perfect. And we're going to go over uh, burnishing tomorrow and then you guys can start transferring your designs onto your piece of pottery. So this is just going over different tools, how to smooth it, how to get it, you know, really nice. I'm going to go in and I'm going to touch this up a little bit more. I might go in with this actually and kind of like smooth going up. And I feel like a lot of times when working with pottery, um, these tools have very specific um, reasons where when working with more like sculptural design or hand-built pottery, you can kind of use them um, as they work for you. 
Ribs definitely used mostly for smoothing. However, some people do use them for decoration, making indents and different things like that. If your pot looks something like this, if it has a few of these little kind of bumpy parts in it, that's okay. If it looks any bumpier than this, you're gonna wanna smooth it out. And if you upload it, I can give you that, you know, individual, like go about doing this, I would add this on type thing. But this is just pretty much how you want your pot to be. Like I said, I indented this because I wanna paint like a, a little turtle coming out. Um, this is pretty much what you want before we start the burnishing process. 